Hi friends, uh, today our topic of discussion is integrity constraints in DBMS. Uh, welcome to this channel Crazy for DB. Uh, integrity constraints basically is the name uh, given to the validity of the data. Uh, we will first understand the meaning of the term integrity as this is spelled here, over here. Integrity means purity. We are very much concerned about the purity of the data. No data should be impure or we are concerned with the reliability of the data. That is when the data is stored in the database. We, uh, we have the trust on the data that the data, data reflects the true facts of real life. And so finally we say integrity basically in respect of the database system the trustworthiness of the data. So, integrity basically means purity, reliability and trustworthiness. That is, the data you can trust to be pure, reliable and error free. Uh, now, there are three forms of integrities. These three forms are, the first is entity integrity. Now, what this entity integrity means? The entity is defined as the uh, uniqueness of the objects uh, that exist in the real world. So every object in the world is unique and the most important property of that object is uniqueness. Now when we store the data about those objects in the database, we also want that the data which is stored in the database is also unique same as the actual entity that exists in the world about which the data has been stored and so we can establish that one to one correspondence between the actual entity of the real world and the data or the row uh, which, it, uh, which uh, represents it in the database. And so entity integrity as has been uh, defined here is to ensure each row is unique. So there has to be some column in the table, minimum one column in the table which must have a unique value so that that can be used as a base to uh, identify each row uniquely in the table. And so the constraints, constraints basically are those checkpoints or those objects that we create in the database which ensure the implementation of the rule of the different types of uh, integrities as we are going to define here. So the constraints uh, which uh, ensure the entity integrity is PK that is primary key or unique. The difference between PK and unique is that primary key is unique as well as not null means the value has to be present whereas unique if the value is present it is unique or otherwise it can be null. And so that is the entity integrity and the entity integrity constraints are primary key and unique. We will talk about the constraints in the second part of this uh, lesson and uh, we will be actually creating those constraints. This is only the first part where I am trying to uh, explain the um, uh, basic concepts of the different integrities. Now, referential integrity. This is the second part of integrity, referential integrity. Uh, referential integrity is required because no entities in the real world are actually isolated. All the entities in the real world happen to be related to each other and if you look closely at the relationship, you will see that those relations are in the parent-child form. For example, if there is an entity department and there is an entity employee, you will always find that there is a relationship between the entity department and uh, entity employee. The entity department must first exist then only an employee can be recruited and put in that department and so the department becomes the parent entity whereas an employee becomes a child entity and obviously there are certain rules required to be followed uh, for this parent-child relationship that is what the referential integrity means as I have defined it over, it over here to ensure valid parent-child relationship so that is the purpose of referential integrity as far as the database is concerned, <coughs> this referential integrity is, uh, is implemented through these five rules as you can see here 
and those five rules basically are the first one is child can relate to only a unique parent so that is the restriction on the child that a child can relate to only one parent for example if an employee is supposed to work then he will work in one particular department and so an employee which is a child entity can relate itself to only one particular department or a unique department that is what this first rule says then child can relate to only an existing parent obviously uh, an employee can be put only in an existing department the department must first exist and then the employee will be recruited in that particular department and so the child can relate only to an existing department uh, that is parent <coughs> the third rule is a child entity may remain unrelated yes this is very important so it is not necessary it is not mandatory on the child to relate to a department uh, sorry uh, to a parent say for example an employee can be there recruited in a company and temporarily the employee may not be assigned to any department so he belongs to company though he belongs to company he does not belong to any particular department and so he may not have a department number assigned to uh, his data or his role and so we say that a child entity may remain unrelated so that could be a temporary phase where a child may not be related to any parent then from the parent side from from the parent point of view there are two rules parent may relate to multiple children obviously a parent entity may relate to multiple children means suppose for example in a department you may have multiple employees working that is always the case in the real uh, time also and so this rule is uh, important from the parent point of view from the child point of view it must relate to only a unique parent whereas from the parent point of view parent may relate to multiple children <coughs> another important aspect from the parent point of view is that parent may remain unrelated so there could be a department in the company and the department currently might be empty there are no employees uh, working in that department and so the parent may remain unrelated so that is also that can also be the case in the parent child relationship or one of the rules to be implemented through the referential integrity the referential integrity is implemented through a constraint called as foreign key that is in the slang language we normally call it as foreign key whereas the scientific name for the foreign key constraint is reference constraint it is reference so we are creating the reference from the child to the parent we will see when we will actually create those constraints uh, in the uh, second part of this topic and then uh, you may come to know uh, about what basically uh, this means uh, now the third important uh, type of integrity is the domain integrity domain integrity domain means what domain basically is a word which specifies a particular scope <coughs> a particular range so domain integrity relates to values from valid set of values so that is the meaning of the domain integrity we can say that for example if we are dealing with uh, say a column which must contain the names of the days then those names of the days can be only sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday or uh, saturday so the value must come from this set of values because there is no other day which is valid to be put in that column so also the same is for the names of the months or uh number of the month like from 1 to 12 so you see that domain integrity basically is the values from a valid set of values that is what when we put this restriction on the data <coughs> then we are implementing the domain integrity and uh, there are couple of things about the domain integrity as i told you already whether null is allowed or not of course domain integrity also enforces whether the value must be present or value may be omitted if the value is not present then we call it as null and so whether null is allowed or not is also the part of domain integrity then value of a specific data type so say there is a column called as salary which cannot contain alphabets and so the values 
must be numeric only and so there must be a particular data type. For example, a date column must contain only the date. A string column must contain only the string. And so the value of specific data type and not only data type, even the precision part that is the width of <coughs> the field or the column is also the part of domain integrity. Uh, as I have already said, the value list of values, we have taken the example of uh, big days and the ones valid range of values. For example, in my company, if I want to restrict the salary not to be less than 1500 and more than 5000, then we can have this range as a valid range of values for the salary. So that is the restriction. So valid range of values is also one of the very important uh, part of the domain integrity. Domain integrity is implemented through the constraint called as check. Check constraint. This is the check constraint or <coughs> an extended check is also not null. Means when this question comes whether the null is allowed or not. If the null is not allowed, then we can designate that column under the domain integrity as not null. So the user will be forced to input some value over there uh, so that it will become not null. So there are two constraints in the domain integrity that is check and not null. So that's all for the time being uh, guys and uh, there will be the next uh, uh, topic where we will be creating the actual constraints along with the table and uh, I will demonstrate to you how these constraints actually behave with respect to these uh, properties. Uh, I will request you to go to the uh, description section, find some interview questions over there on this topic and uh, you can answer them in the comments uh, below this uh, video. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.